and today joining me in a cell block, D-Wing, in Bogaray Jail, is a bloke who I've considered almost be equal to me in his knowledge about Bogaray oh, Jail. That's a big call, Jackson. <laughs> that's a big call. Uh, Trent Dalton, Trent's here. My friend is here to talk to us today about um, Bogaray, his connections to it. And thanks, mate. I really appreciate you coming. Oh, Jack, it's, um, it's really an honour to be here and to be... You know, we're about a metre away from Slim Halliday's cell. And, uh, but just to be here with you, who's had a massive impact um, in my knowledge of Brisbane and my love of Brisbane and my love of the darkest sides of Brisbane, but also you really um, had, had a really beautiful and generous hand in, in Boyce Waller's universe. So it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. Well, when you, were, when you arrived today, we were just talking, coming in about yeah. how amazing Brisbane is, isn't it? Well, don't, don't the layers of the Brisbane onion just keep peeling away for you? You know, I mean, it just gets deeper and deeper for me, this city, you know, and which is why I love catching up with you, because every time, and I think I've known you for, I think I first interviewed you, interviewed you for Brisbane News Magazine, and that was probably 20 years ago. That's true. Yeah, but, but every time I've met you since, you've got a new tale to tell me about this city, and I, and I love that. And it, it, you could walk around these these um, these wings and and these these cells and see fifty stories in one cell, in each cell, you know, of each person who's been in each cell. Times that by however many cells are in this place, I could write a book about each one. You know, it's just that I chose to write a book about this guy over here in number nine. That's all. But you know, I hope I live long enough to tell number seven, number six. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, Brisbane. We we we're just this little little town you know and it's so cool that you and this place exists in that space as well you know and I think that's so important that that Bogo still has its role as the city progresses that we never stop looking back as well and and that's what this place rep represents I'm so proud of our gothic nature our city's gothic nature there is a distinct I call it a sunshine gothic it's like this sort of distinct Brisbane Gothic and and I love it you know it's like nowhere else on earth you know and and it's funny I'm saying those words as I'm looking through the most wonderful framed um, doorway into this uh, uh, D block and I'm seeing the barbed wire and the orange brick of Bogo and that is what I'm talking about Brisbane Gothic like that is it in a nutshell like that's it in a frame you know Queensland was always delightfully not for those that were here but mm. from a storytelling perspective mm. 40 to 60 years behind everywhere else. So Bogoray was a Victorian era prison that never changed <laughs> until like the 80s. And, you know, and it took absolute riots and trouble for there to be reform. Mate, I, I remember coming here. I'll tell you, the first time I came here, we were visiting this man that my mum fell in love with. And, and his, his name's Lyle in my book, out of respect for him and, and his now family. I don't say his real name, but I loved this man when I was a kid cared about him a great deal and and so when I'm a kid and we came up to visit this guy he's he got put away for 10 years inside here inside this very place and I remember distinctly and I must have been eight um, I remember distinctly thinking this place is terrifying when I looked at it just from the outside I'm talking from like walking up that that well literally walking up that that road like and and uh and just going <laughs> This is, what is this place? This is like something where the villains come from, they escape from these places in a Roald Dahl novel. Like this is, this is where the killers go in an Agatha, Agatha Christie book, or this is, you know, it, it just did feel like something from a past that I wasn't aware of as a kid. And, and to sort of think that this guy that I loved was behind those big orange brick walls was really kind of a deep thought for me, even at eight, you know, like I really felt that. And, you know, which is why from then on, I think I did just take an immediate fascination with the place, you know, so even as, even as a teenager, those riots that you're talking about and the blokes getting up on the rooftop, I remember seeing that on the news, watching that with my dad and going, oh shit, I wonder if, I wonder if Lyle's there. Like, I wonder if Lyle's one of those boys and, and taking a real keen interest in, like I was genuinely, worried about the welfare of him and going, I wonder what they're protesting. And dad would tell me, well, yeah, their freaking living situations are freaking um, medieval. And, and that's what they're protesting about. And, uh, and so all of those things took on a kind of personal nature for me. And, and it took on a kind of a, I was personally interested in the journey of this place. And, and then it kind of gets shut down. And then, 
you know, our guy gets shifted away and, and it sort of felt like that was the end and then I became a journo and that's when I meet you, you know, and I sort of then start kind of realising, oh man, there's not just Lyle's story in this place, there's, there's, um, there's Slims for one um, and then there's just endless stories and, and all those stories are written on the graffiti of these walls, you know, and, and I don't, uh, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy visiting the place in some sort of, for some strange reason. You're yeah. a weirdo. Oh, no, no, it's sort of, it's like my wife, you know, where, yeah, honey, where, where do you, where do you and the kids want to go today? You fancy going to Bogo Road? It's a strange thing, but, but it's, everyone's, everyone in Brisbane should be, I mean, everyone needs to come here. Like anyone with the slightest interest in history, and is living in this city, you couldn't find a better, you couldn't find a better place to go. Discover the seedy underbelly of Brisbane on the Moonlight State Fortitude Valley Crime Tour. Visit historic crime scenes, including illegal casinos, strip clubs and brothels, and the site of the notorious Whiskey A Go Go fire bombing. Join me, Jack Sim, and my team of guides to discover Brisbane's criminal history. Book a public or private tour at crimetoursaustralia.com.au. I remember reading stories of the Dutton Park State School basically being filled with, the, and you know, these kids being educated, you know, beneath the shadow of this, you know, this place. It just sort of... In the real old days when there was a hanging or something, the kids would all be at the beach, you know, like, you know, get a good look at that, you know, not wouldn't get to see the hanging, but they'd see the body come down the driveway if they were lucky, they'd see the hangman arrive and <laughs> go into the gates and the bell would ring and the black flag would go up and <laughs> someone's doom would just happen. I mean, there was no, you know, there's no computer games in those early days. Oh, mate, I, look, I'd take games. that, I'd take that over Super Mario Brothers any day, man. I'd take, I mean, that, that is amazing to think about. You imagine, but well, when, when Slim busts out, right? I mean, that's the thing that they're onto the schools. They're saying, don't, you know, be careful, there's a guy on the run. And all the kids are like, what? There's a guy on the run. <laughs> this is the most amazing thing ever. No, it, just, it had physically and mental impacts on yeah. the people of Brisbane and yeah. wider Queensland when there were the escapes and trouble. And What's your take on why it eventually shut? When you describe it like that, I think, yeah, wow, it would have had a, a, a mental impact on people in the area. Big scare when he was a member for South Brisbane Premier. He wanted it out of his electorate. Right. It, it, every every local parliamentarian, going right back as far as the twenties and even earlier, um, the jail brought them some form of embarrassment. In fact, around election, election times, the crims often would do things like rally ups, like just cause them in a ruckus, smash their mm. chip cans against the walls of their cells or something, just to agitate for some improvement in a ration or something. And, Usually they'd get, get it, shut them up in the middle of the election campaign. They'd mm. usually get what mm. they wanted. Mm. But Vince Gare, I mean, after a series of really dramatic mutinies in the 50s, uh, he fast-tracked the building of Way Coal um, as a medium security prison. So west of Brisbane, they established Way Coal in the late 50s. And then from there, they basically still took another 30-something years to end the jail. But it, it really, I think, was the, that trouble of the 80s, riots, and hunger strikes, and yeah. protests. And one of the questions I was going to ask you was, um, what were your family connections to Bob Ray? In the in the 1980s, when my my mum sort of leaves my old my my old man, um, you know, essentially the first half of my book, Boy Swallows Universe, that book's 50-50 as far as it being based on fact and based on my imagination. The first half of it is very kind of close to kind of, you know, basically my zero to eight years of um, age where we're growing up with this guy that I loved. He was the first man I ever really cared about and very much a father figure in my life. And, um, and you know, funnily enough, yeah, uh, he's just a really sweet man today. And uh, he actually has a, um, a beautiful son that I've, you know, caught up with. and. You know, really, really just, he's one of, the, one of the men in my mum's life that treated her the best and, and she really cared about. And, uh, but uh, yeah, they were, you know, at that time, for whatever reason, they were, they were pushing drugs. Yeah, they were, they were drug dealing. And, uh, and, and this guy, he's, he's based, you know, who I based on Lyle, the character of Lyle in my book, he, he um, was pretty high up in the kind of Brisbane underworld. Like he knew some pretty serious dudes 
And uh, one of those serious dudes he knew was Slim Halliday um, from number nine, just, just next to us. Um, and uh, Slim would visit our house out at uh, Ipswich. And, uh, and you know, I, I was kind of friends with Slim. I kind of looked up to Slim and kind of really cared about that guy. Anyway, life was kind of really fun for my three older brothers and I. And, um, and then it all went south when Lyle, I'll call him Lyle, got put away for 10 years in, in Dubogo. And, uh, and, and then my brothers and I got shifted away to um, sort of north side of Brisbane. If you want to know more about the characters that appear in Boy Swallows Universe, the hit Netflix series, Slim Halliday, the Taxi Driver Killer, written by Ken Blanche, an award-winning journalist. And if you want to know about the general history of Boggaro Jail, you can buy my book, The History of Boggaro Jail and Escapes from Boggaro Jail. All of the books are available at my website, jacksim.com.au. And then, and then, of course, the other side of um, the story of Boy Swallows Universe is my mum's journey. And I, I sort of don't go into that through respect for her, but also is a really interesting thing. And this is a lot of thing about um, mum, mum prisoners in, in, in general. Here's the thing I want to say. They are, can I swear? No, they are fucking amazing. They are, any woman who came through this place in the women's prison is fucking amazing. And it's such a vulnerable time. A lot of them had kids and Slim would have been the first person to tell you, but any, any male con will tell you that doing time as a mum of kids could sometimes be way harder than doing 15 years as a murderer, you know? And, uh, and I so admire all those mums. And this is the thing why I'm always careful with what I say about my mum's journey, who had her time here, right? And, uh, but that woman now is this incredible um, grandmother who's led a life, you know, she's in her late 60s, and this hardworking woman who's, you know, just, I love dearly and has done so much for me. That two years of her life, it could so easily be seen as that defining her, where it's just a blip. It's a blip on her really magical bloody radar. So I'm really careful with how I pitch it, but there's no doubt about it, I built some of her journey into the story of Boy Swallows Universe. And I wrote that book, Boy Swallows Universe. It's the story of a kid who busts into Boggo Road Women's Prison on Christmas Day to save his mum's life. That's what that story's about. It's really big and it's got these bigger themes of love and hope and family, but really it's just about a kid who misses his mum on Christmas day, is really worried about her and seeks help from the great Slim Halliday to find a way to bust into Boggo Road Women's. And you know, that comes from very real places, Jack, for me, you know, in terms of just missing my mum, you know what I mean? And at, at certain times in that time. And, and that, I think, I love telling that story now as, as, as much as I worry about saying anything about mum or embarrassing mum or whatever, because that's her story to tell. But what I love about saying it is that it all turned out so freaking beautifully, you know what I mean? And, and, all, and I'm so glad I turned that stuff that whatever fear I had as a kid, and, um, you know, I turned it into something beautiful. I could show people like, oh man, look what she survived, you know, and, and look what any mum who has to go into here Look what they have survived and look what they can survive and never write them off you know just please never write them off you know and that's a really powerful thing I, like that's the story of my life you know and sorry for my rambling but uh, i'm getting quite emotional because it's it's just been a crazy week for me because they turn this thing into a play and it's highly emotional play mate it's so emotional and deep i was with mum on monday night for the opening and and we just were weeping, man. We were just weeping, Jack. And, and, and I just feel like everything's come full circle. And to be here talking to you inside this place, it's actually really quite profound. And, and, and I keep thinking, just thank God no one wrote her off, you know? And, and because she turns to me, man, and she just goes, I think I won. I think I beat it all. You know, that's what she said after that play. You know what I mean? And I just think, you know, I, and she did. Like, there's just no doubt about it. She she wins in the end after a series of pretty dodgy men, you know, in a life and all sorts of shit, including this place that I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Jack, it could easily break a person, you know? It's, you know, and break a mum, right? And, and yeah, it's just very cool. It's just very cool, the whole thing. And so, and I, <laughs> I told you I wasn't even going to talk about it, but it's like, I just want to, but, but it's because it, it shouldn't be something 
in many ways I don't because it's beautiful. You know what I mean? So anyway, that's my connection. And, uh, and then, um, yeah, and then my realization later in life as a journo, the deeper connection, the funnier connection was my realization of just who Slim Halliday was. That's been one of the classic things made in my life in terms of connection to this place. Thanks for joining us at Boggo, the official podcast of Boggo Jail. Make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you behind bars next time.